Let's go over the solutions to the midterm. The first question, we needed to extract KN and VT from an IV curve. And we simply find the slope using the square root of ID, get 0.8. That slope happens to equal the square root of KN divided by 2, and that's giving us our KN value of 1.28. Now, we can just see that the device turns on at 3 volts, and we can just call it VT equals 3 volts. But we can also go through the Y equals MX plus B form of the equation and solve for VT. And in this case, we get 3 volts. Next question is, how would you go about designing a power supply for a common source amplifier? And so really, all we're looking at is this part of it. How large to make VDD? Well, you can see that we have a current drop across this biasing resistor and this biasing resistor, and then we have VDS. Well, you could just start by starting with a supply of 15, 12, 5, or 3.3 volts of standard supply, and then making sure that all of these values fall within that, that value. Now, what about VDS? VDS has to be greater than about 2.2 volts in weak or moderate inversion, and VDS has to be greater than VGS minus VT in strong inversion. VDS also has to be large enough so that it does not fall below these two values, 0.2, weak or moderate inversion, or VGS minus VT, strong inversion, as it changes due to the input voltage times the gain. This change can be seen by 2 times the absolute value of the gain times the amplitude of the input signal. And you have to add that to make sure that you don't leave saturation. So really, you just have to make sure that VDD is greater than the source resistance drop, the drain resistance drop, the VDS min to keep in your current source mode, and plus your output swing. Okay. Now, why do we always assume some sort of DC stabilization? Well, VT and KN vary from transistor to transistor, and it also, on the same transistor, varies with temperature and time. And since the current varies with KN and VT, and GM varies with KN and VT, the operating point and thus the gain will vary too much to have a repeatable gain from circuit to circuit. Also, VT shifts either from transistor to transistor over time might cause your design to go into linear if you were biased close to that point, or it might go into cutoff if you were close to that point in an unexpected manner. Here we have a PMOS transistor, and we need to determine whether it's in saturation or linear. We calculate VDS, minus 1.6 volts, VGS, minus 0.8 volts. And in this case, the way we do it, if VDS is less than VGS minus VT, we should be in saturation. And it is, so it's in saturation. Here we have a common drain amplifier, and V out is being taken off of the source, not the drain. I've already given you the bias points, so you can do a quick check of VDS versus VGS minus VT, and yes, it's in saturation. GM in this case, this is a power device, happens to be 1.3, RO, it's very large, close to infinity. So we get our small signal model here, and remember, V out is here, not here. And when we go through the derivation, we get this equation. RL is so much bigger than RS, it drops out. And so it's approximately equal to this, which is very close to 1.